Happy St George's Day everybody. I hope you'll join me in raising a glass to good old St George. Anyway, this is today's problem. Uh, Dig Dug Dan, fellow YouTuber next door, dropped this into me. Um, as you can see, the top bearing is no more. Um, so it's got to be replaced. I'm going to cut it off and put this new one on. It's a different shape, but we'll get over that. But also, I've got to replace the grease nipple because it's it needs a remote one because of where the, the, the ram is in the machine. Um, you can't get a greaser on it, so it has to be remote. So that's got to be changed. So we'll do that first. I'm going to take this one out, which is a, I think this is a 6mm. And we're going to replace it with a 8th BSP. Now this ram is from a sort of brick crusher, rock crusher. Um, it's a, a small one that they can get behind um, or into small areas. Um, but it's still massively powerful. Um, I don't know how much this ram pushes, but it's it's I've seen them work and crikey they can push. Um, so they don't last forever these bearings. Sometimes it's a lack of maintenance on the hirer's part, um, but they do get a lot of abuse. So they do have to be changed once in a while. Goes along with all the rest of the maintenance on these things. When they do the sort of job they do, they do take a pounding. I'm going to drill this out. Looks deep enough to me. I'm putting um, a tapered um, tap in. It's a tapered thread. This is a starter tap anyway, and I'm gonna then I'm gonna put a final tap in, which is still tapered. As you can see, it's pretty fine. Just going to change them over. Tap wrench is a little bit big for this. Um, but I couldn't find the small one. You don't want to go too big with small taps because you can't feel. You need to be able to feel where it's biting and where it might catch up. That's how these taps get broken. Lack of feel. Alright. Let's just blow that out. Not any dwarf getting in there into the, the bearing with, along with the grease. You see that? I don't know if you can see that. That's a lovely little thread in there. So that's that bit done. Let's concentrate on this. Now I've worked out to get the bearing in the same place as the original. I've got to cut it right in the middle of the second weld. So we'll give it a go. And the only way I can see of doing it easily is with the grinder because I don't want to get the, the shaft of the ram hot or too hot by uh, using the gas axe or anything like that so it makes sense to just um, cut it with a disc and it does a much neater job than the gas axe would to be fair Quite get all the way around this with uh, this. I suppose if I put another new one in, it might cut a bit more, but I'm about to my limit. 
Let's see if it's enough to knock it off. It's almost gone. Looks like we're going to have to uh, resort to the good old hacksaw. Let's see if I can keep it still for long enough. I think that's going to be a problem. Let's see if we can wedge it somehow. Yeah, of course, I'm going to open it up the other way now. try and clamp it so I can get a proper push on it with the hacksaw at the moment it's just uh, bouncing off it hey there we go that's what we're looking for. Done. All right, so we'll clean up that end, put a bit of a bevel on it, and uh, see what we can do. Surprised, I surprised myself actually. I'll cut that quite square with that disc. It doesn't need an awful lot of cleaning up. And this has already got a bevel on it, so I'm just going to take the rust off. Get it nice and clean and shiny it's going to be a bit of a peculiar one the way we weld this on but so I've done them before like this and they, they've all worked so go on like something like that yeah let's stand her up get it tacked up I want to get this as damn near spot bollock in the middle as I can. And so with all the, the amount of tonnage this must push, I don't want it pushing off centre. So if I can get it as close as possible to being in the middle, we'll be laughing. Cool, look at that concentration. Done. All right, I'm gonna <clears throat> just protect the ram as best I can. spits and spots of weld on there. It tacked up. I'm just going to put a tiny tack on each corner, on each side. Just to 
hold it while we get our first runs in. just a few tacks just to hold it in place now I'm going to put a bit of rag through there as well and I don't want to get any splatter in there It. So what I'm going to do is just going to put a, a small run in either side, just like a root, and then we're going to give it a bit of a preheat. Just a little run. Make sure it's got it. I'm just going to heat it up for a while. I could have got the, the gas axe out, but I think this will do it sufficiently. I don't want to get it too hot because I don't want to get any uh, trouble with the seals at the other end of the ram so I don't want to let any heat go too far down but I don't want it stone cold and avoid some cracking and or anything like that cold you know it's shrinking too quickly and cracking so that's about enough let's lay it down start putting in some lines right now I've soaked this rag in water this one isn't at the moment but as you'll see I will have to I'm not sure how many runs I'm going to have to put on here. I don't know, three, four, each side maybe. But we'll see. Can't come up too high. Yeah, you can see that's why I'm going to have to wet that. Um, yeah, I can't come up the bearing surface too high because of where it goes in the machine and I can't go too far on the ram the other side up the underneath on the narrow the, sh the short edge because of the ram going back into the cylinder so we've got to be a bit careful how many runs we put in obviously need enough to stop it falling off taking out those tacks because they were pretty shitty tacks. I think that's four possibly on that side. side and <clears throat> perhaps three on the short sides 
something like that. Well, the short side is a bit tight on the ram. So now I'm just going to let it cool. I don't want to cool it too quick so we get any uh, hardening. But I don't want the heat to run down the ram and affect the seals. So it's a sort of a balancing act. I'm just going to let it cool off. Not on its own, but you know. I'm not going to quench it, put it that way. I'm go and get that one dunked again. that as it is and come back when it's cool which is like now well it's not cool cool it's, it's cooled down a lot enough to just about handle clean her up make sure we haven't got any contamination on the piston See, that's mm, cool enough to handle there, so that's not going to worry the uh, seals. And that end is still, well, up to 50 odd. So it's almost too hot to touch that end, but the other end is okay. So that's it. Job done. That can go back in the machine. Yeah, I think that'll do. You can, it's you see what I mean about going running it too far around the, the short side, just up to where the ram goes in, into the seal. So that's what I didn't want to see. This one was different with it being a round um, bearing housing, but we've done this before. We've used exactly the same um, bearing carriers before. And it's all worked. So hopefully, if you go over and look at Dig Dug Dan's YouTube channel, you might even see him putting this back together. So thanks for watching. And hopefully, we'll catch you on the next one.